I'm here with Sasuma Chakrabarti, who's the president of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which is having its annual meeting here in Istanbul. Sasuma, the big theme, of course, is growth. How do you get growth back into the economies that you lend to across Eastern Europe and Asia? What role can the EBRD play? I think we have a dual role. First of all, really investing in the right things. So SMEs would be one of the things I think we have to think more about. Infrastructure, particularly regional infrastructure. The other thing is policies. We also talk to governments about what are the right policies to improve the investment climate, to attract investment into their countries. When you talk about SMEs, I don't know how important they are in your lending at the moment. The European Central Bank's got lots of ideas about mm. asset-backed securities and things like that. Could we see similar things from the... Well, we're going to do a review. Actually, already SMEs are quite a big part of what we do both direct and indirect lending to SMEs in all over our, our countries of operation. We're going to do a review to get the best ideas out of what we already do. And I think what the question we need to ask ourselves and our directors, should we ramp up what we do? And how should we do it best? Where should we focus it? What's the best channel, direct or indirect? Those are the sort of questions we need to ask ourselves, and, and you, quickly. You mentioned infrastructure as well. Uh, lots of liquidity around in the global system. How, how can the EBRD help harness that and put it into worthwhile projects? Well, one of the things we're doing uh, in the next few months is actually now talking to sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, and so on, and seeing what the appetite is for actually coming in with EBRD, whether there's a workable proposition we can come up with that would actually really help finance some of the worthwhile infrastructure projects. Is, is there one simple answer or one simple uh, solution to this pool of liquidity on one side and the lack of investment elsewhere? There isn't a, a simple answer to this. Um, some will say it's a demand issue, some will say it's a supply issue, some will say it's regulation. It's actually a mixture of things going on and I think we need to really try and help uh, ascertain what the real challenges are and they will differ from country by country, sector by sector, size of enterprise by size of enterprise. Let's talk about uh, North Africa, the four countries there you started lending yeah. in the last year. It's still very modest and as I understand it you haven't got the full authority yet to do a full program. So it's taking an awful long time isn't it? Actually we've been rather quick by the standards of international financial institutions. Uh, we got the call really only a couple of years ago. We started operations in uh, the region last September. Uh, we've established some uh, temporary offices. We'll soon have permanent Offices are hiring staff rapidly. 181 but you million got euros. All the shareholders approved. approval yet? Yeah. Uh, we have all but one actually, and we will get uh, that approval very shortly. Article one, therefore, will be amended, and then these countries can, in the next few months, move towards proper status and regular resources. Can I ask about the role of international institutions yeah. such as your own in this? very uncertain world, we don't know what's going to happen to the global economy. Before the crisis, um, people even talked about, you know, why do we need an IMF? Now, of course, the, the argument's um, the opposite and um, people worry about the state of global governance. What sort of confidence do you have that, well, let's look at Europe um, in the wider sense, that Europe has the correct sort of political government uh, institutions in place? Well, it's a really big question. I think um, Europe does have many of the correct uh, governance uh, institutions in place. I think the banking union will help. Uh, integration further, which is, I think, one of the key things we need to have. And I'm pretty confident in the next couple of years, work on the banking union will be fruitful and successful. I think in terms of the other IFIs, we've got to find out the real sources of growth, really, beyond what we currently do. Because as you said earlier, growth, unemployment, youth unemployment, those are the biggest new challenges for us. Mr Erdogan, in his speech here today, talked about how he wasn't going to be told by IMF officials what to do. Is that a popular reaction you're getting from political leaders? Not necessarily. People have, different countries have different reactions and different experiences of the IMF. I mean, I'm quite a fan of the IMF, having worked as a young person in the World Bank and the IMF some 25 years ago. Uh, I think the IMF does its best. I mean, it, has, uh, it does tailor what it does to different countries' experiences more and more. I think that's appreciated. So I'm not an IMF uh, basher by any means. We work very closely with the IMF, actually, in many of our programmes. Sasuma, so, thank you very much. Thank you very much.